It's perhaps the crowning glory of the India-Japan partnership and the foundation stone for the bullet train to be launched in 2022 has been announced and with me the person who perhaps knows the most about Indian Railways, Dr. Vivek Debroy. He is a member of the Niti Aayog and also been part of many panels on the Indian Railways. Thank you so much for being on agenda and taking questions from all of us because we're all so curious. I think the, uh, the bullet train evokes so much interest in everyone but also a lot of questions. Do you think, uh, Dr. Debroy, the fact that it's coming just days after a rail minister was, you know, lost his job because there were too many rail accidents. It just a little off timing. Well, I'll leave that, I'll ignore that bit about a railway minister having lost his job. It's neither here nor there. I think the first thing to realize about the bullet train, well, two things to realize. Firstly, people use the word bullet in a very, very loose sense. Hmm. A proper, proper bullet train cannot be a bullet until it attains a speed of something like 350 kilometers an hour. Right. A high-speed train can do 180 kilometers, can do 200, but a proper, proper bullet train is 350 kilometers. You can do it only along straight railway tracks. Uh -huh. You cannot get speeds of 350 kilometers per hour against railway tracks that curve, you need segregated tracks, you cannot have level crossings for a proper bullet. The second point to note about this bullet train is these are not the railway's own resources. Had it been the railway's own resources, it would have been a legitimate question to ask that why can't these resources be used for something else. These are incremental resources that have come from the Japanese. These are specific to this bullet train project. Had it not been for the bullet train, it's not that these resources could have been used for augmenting safety. These resources are at very low repayment terms, low mm -hmm. rates of interest, with a moratorium and a fairly long, and a fairly long duration right. for repaying. There's a completely separate issue mm -hmm. about whether it's viable or not, how do you repay the loan, but let's not mix it up with this issue of other resources being frittered away on a bullet train. Okay, so to get it straight, first of all, I think you're breaking hearts immediately by saying that this 250, average speed is going to be 250 kilometers. So you're saying we can't call it bullet train. It's a misnomer that we should say just high speed trains. That's what you're telling all our viewers? No, this one, we don't know what the speed is going to be. I'm not really talking about only the average speed. Right. This one can potentially also touch 350. It depends on how many stops it's going to have. We don't know that. Obviously, if it's going to have stops in between, then you cannot have an average of 350. But potentially, this one can have an average of 350 or certainly a peak of 350. And if it doesn't have too many stops, there's going to be much of a difference between a peak and an average. Okay, so as we all know, there's lots of, and you know, you're talking about the fact you've immediately uh, tried to clarify that point that everybody's you know, pummeling on social media about safety. So the Japanese, which helped us build the metro, which has transformed lives in the capital, right? For all of us, it's transformed the way we get. So they gave us loans, they helped us build the metro. And you're saying their funds can't be used. So that argument is totally vacuous. That argument is totally vacuous. And what many people do not know is when they offered us the loan for the metro, mm. They had offered it either for the metro or for the bullet train Even project. at that time. Even at that in the time, 90s. we opted for the metro. Very, very interesting. Okay. Now, if we... The, so, when the government, when they say that... I know you said that the railway minister being removed, you... But, but it, the fact remains that it is just days after two or three derailments coming very close to each other. And the figures also say that... The number of derailments in the last decade have been the highest. That the number of deaths, at least 51% of them, have been because just because of derailment. Uh, 458 
deaths to be precise and they are saying that the only reason that that happens is because they are overused and that you do not also invest into them. Just for our students also, yes, sir has done a report on this, so he is the best uh, person to answer these questions. So, uh, going by the fact that the Japanese only gave it for that, could we have asked the Japanese that help us fix our current real network first, which was, you know, which the Brits have left us or, you know, which need help, uh, instead of building this very fancy train, which is a three-hour uh, right. I already said do not try to bring in the same issue again. Right. I already said that these are not resources that could have been used for safety. So that question I have already answered. Now let's come to this issue. There are several things to say on safety and we can have six episodes on just safety alone. <laughs> but we don't have six episodes. There has been a mention of the metro. There is a certain time of the day when the metro does not function. At night. What happens during that period? You use it to maintain tracks. Mm -hmm. We have high density corridors, particularly to the eastern parts of the country, particularly in UP, where I do not even have more than five minutes between the passing of trains. Wow. There are 1,000 trains running per day, if I include the freight trains also. So let us recognize that in the short run, it is extremely congested. Mm -hmm. I need at least two hours for maintaining the tracks. If I don't have two hours, at least one and a half hours. Mm -hmm. It is true that over a period of time we have not spent much on safety and maintenance. All that is true. It's also true that over a period of time when railway finances improve, we will have greater capacity. It's true when there are the freight corridors, there will be some easing of capacity. But as of now, unless we agree that safety is most important and come what may, trains will run late because I cannot deliver safety and speed at the same time. Wow. I am simply running too many trains. Purely on the figures, Indian railways don't do too badly in terms of accidents. Okay. They do badly in terms of deaths and fatalities. Let's recognize this. There are accidents in other countries also. Big differences, you don't have as many deaths. And there are other issues I'm not going to get into about the kinds of coaches and whatever, whatever. The primary reason for deaths are one, as you have said, derailments and two, level crossings. Level crossings, okay. So derailments from, this is, you're actually giving us bad news that because we don't even have those two hours maintenance, we're going to continue. Five minutes. We're going to continue to have accidents? No, I did not say that. As citizens, we need to recognize safety is most important. So let us not simultaneously demand that a Delhi to Howrah train has to run in 12 hours and expect that lives will be secure. These are incompatible. After 9-11, particularly, we are aware with the way the airlines uh, looks at security, yeah, it's no yeah. different here. We have to accept that until capacity constraints ease, come what may, I need to carve out those one and a half hours or two hours. If that means I need to rationalize trains, so be it. If it means I have to cut down on trains that do not have high occupancy. Are they doing that? Are they rationalizing time? Are they cutting don't, down? Don't say we, yeah. because I said collective. We have this excess number of trains. Why? Because collectively we wanted them. Okay. How many programs have you done? where you've argued for cutting down on trains. 
No, but we think not that no. our representatives no. are wiser and no, our no, government no, is no, no, wiser no, no. The and the rail ministry is wiser than but us. No, who wants but the representatives, the representatives carry our voices. How many voices have I heard saying that reduce speed? I want safety. Not too many. So, Dr. Debroy talking about reducing speed on the day of the bullet train. Thing. Depends yeah. on the stretch. Understand. Depends I on don't the really stretch. understand. No. I'm about the yeah. high it's a very want. interesting idea. Okay. I have lots more questions, but I think they should all also get it. Who wants to go first? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to? Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. I would like to ask is there any comparison between the Maharaja Express and this bullet train? Because Maharaja Express is going for only for the foreigners in India and it covers all over the Rajasthan for foreigners and that give so many uh, good facilities to foreigners. Is there anything relate in that so that our citizens also could get such type of facilities? Who told you it's only for foreigners? You can travel on it. So, but it's it is expensive. expensive. Yes. It is expensive, yes. But look, we are going off on a tangent. But if you, in something like this, what are you doing? You're not, you're spending time on the train. If you look at that and compare it to the hotel cost of any five-star hotel, it's not exorbitantly priced at all. But we are really going off on a complete No, tangent. yeah, that's true. But I just wanted to ask you, if we talk about financially viable, one IIM professor, I believe, did a study and said that we would have to this, because I remember the viability of Metro also came up when it was first introduced. But they're saying they would have to do, I think, about 100 trips daily in order to pay back this loan in 50 years' time, which is the time period given. Is that, I mean, how... how All right, so let's look at viability. Right. Of the bullet train, yeah. Of the bullet train, yeah. we're back to the bullet yeah. train. Bullet trains or anything similar to bullet trains are generally not viable anywhere in the world. Not even Japan. Unless you have stretches where you can exploit real estate development. Even in Japan, in segments where you have been able to exploit the real estate, Can you then it becomes that? viable. Real estate exploiting real estate real as in, as in yeah. you have the land, you have the land, right. so you use it for commercial development. The revenue does not come only from fares. Interesting. So give the station to restaurants to and whatever, things like that. To, right. to, to commercial space, restaurants, malls, uh, cinema halls, it doesn't really matter. But the revenue, the viability, does not come from fares alone. Mm -hmm. When we look at this one, mm -hmm. we are looking at it on the basis of figures that exist today. Right. Any exercise, whether it's done by someone in IAM, someone in IIT, someone in Niti Aayog, will be based on what happens today. Mm -hmm. If one goes back and looks at Delhi Metro, the explosion one has seen would not have been anticipated back then. So, in terms of viability, whether it is in the kind of real estate development that happens along that stretch mm -hmm. or the number of passengers, which again is a function of the fares, we don't really know whether it is going to be viable, not purely in terms of fares, but right. also in terms of the real estate development along that stretch. 